I V M. The United Nations has set up 17 sustainable goals with the aim of improving education quality, curbing poverty, tackling climate change, and preserving our environment. Electric vehicles will play a major role in achieving these goals as they'll help reduce our carbon footprint and conserve the environment. Hello, I'm Shila Aditya and in today's episode of Capital Minai's Techipedia series, I'll be in conversation with Ashish Sharma, who's the senior director and automotive sector lead for Capgemini Invent in India. We'll be discussing the rise in electric vehicles and how they will positively impact sustainability, which will pave the way for the larger goal of preserving our environment. So let's take a quick break as we buckle up for this ride with Ashish. Ladies, I'm sure you will relate to it if I say that we are constantly busy with work, studies, cooking and what not. And amidst all of this, we often forget an important element that needs our desperate attention, finance. So here we are, bringing to you SBI Life presents a sip of finance, a women exclusive podcast where we will teach you how to manage personal finances in a simple and straightforward way with your host Priyanka Acharya. a finance expert who's been in the industry for 14 plus years and not just in english but in seven more languages so tune in every tuesday for fresh episodes on the ibm podcast network and all major podcast streaming platforms hi ashish how are you doing today welcome to uh, cap gemini secupedia series Hi Shila, uh, I'm doing great and uh, looking forward to the conversation today. No, uh, thank you so much for being with us uh, today. We are talking a lot about you know uh, the automotive industry and uh, you know some things which are yet to come. But uh, given that you've been a part of the industry for some time, uh, you've probably seen various cycles of how it's grown, how it's changed. But probably nothing like the last two years uh, during the pandemic, which must have been very, very unique. Uh, could you tell us a little about that to begin? Yeah, uh, definitely, Shila. Uh, I think the last two years were uh, uh, unprecedented uh, in the automotive industry, and not just the auto industry. A lot of industries were uh, impacted uh, terribly, and uh, auto automotive industry. Uh, you know, it's such a global industry; it got hit everywhere. uh i remember in china the sales uh, you know they went down by almost 70% in uh, early february uh, 2020 and in uh, america also uh, the sales went down by almost half around that time uh, europe uh, had a pretty uh, uh, you know worse uh, impact uh, i think the sales went down by almost 80% and similarly in india also uh, during those months uh, you know we saw uh, no sales and then overall for the year uh, uh, still uh, we had a negative impact uh, i think commercial vehicles uh, was hit the most uh, almost 20% uh, fall in the numbers a uh, two wheelers went down three wheelers went down so overall uh, yeah it was pretty bad and i think it'll be some time before we hit back the numbers that we had registered uh, six or seven years back so uh, yeah it'll take some time but now uh, we see the numbers coming back up again uh, with the restrictions uh, uh, getting uh, uh, you know loosened up and uh, you know so the sales numbers are coming up uh, but then uh, unfortunately uh, as we are coming out of the pandemic uh, there are new things which have come up on the horizon we see the whole uh, semiconductor supply chain issue so now that's constraining the supply uh, of vehicles then you also have the russia ukraine thing and uh, that's also having an impact on the supply chain so uh, globally uh, you know we are coming out of one thing and then uh, two more things are impacting us so yeah interesting times wow so you know amidst all of this let's say uncertainty and chaos in the industry another thing uh, which has i would say gone the other direction or rather a little bit of a positive uh, is actually i think the electric vehicle segment right i think that also has somehow seen a massive surge uh, at least by of consumer interest of obviously vehicles in the market it's sort of tied in with the last couple of years that it's the it's suddenly taken uh, you know the whole world by storm so what's what's your take on you know why this has happened like why is the whole world sort of experiencing a rise in you know electric cars and uh, sustainability as a part of that initiative yeah i, I think uh, a very important question 
So uh, last few years, uh, electric vehicles had definitely, you know, there's a lot of interest uh, which has been building up. And uh, especially in the Western markets, uh, you know, the sales have been growing quite fast uh, right. in this particular segment. In India, still the numbers are low, but uh, we are expecting things to pick up, uh, you know, uh, in the next uh, uh, two, three, four years uh, over here. Uh, but definitely sustainability has a big role to play. Uh, in this also, uh, especially, you know, uh, after the uh, discussions happened uh, at the climate meet uh, uh, some time back, uh, I think globally, uh, all the industries have uh, are making a big push towards sustainability. And then uh, uh, we know automotive industries, you know, one of the big, uh, I would say, uh, stakeholders in this entire uh, sustainability movement uh, because of the uh, emissions that come out of our uh, vehicles. So, uh, because uh, there is so much push on the sustainability side, e- even the investment community now, you know, they are uh, targeting their investments based on how sustainable companies are. So automotive industry has taken note. And then especially, you know, uh, who can uh, not talk about Tesla? They are the ones who started this whole thing. Correct. And now the success that they are seeing has uh, resulted in all the other big OEMs taking note. Right. And, you know, whether it's uh, Mercedes or uh, Volkswagen or Daimler, everybody is seeing that if they don't act now, hopefully Tesla is going to just take the back cake and you know, move ahead. So uh, I think yeah, all these factors are, have come together and uh, the whole EV thing is uh, moving uh, faster now. Wow. I mean, and it's great to see that this sort of global movement has, you know, uh, trickled down also to India, like you mentioned, even though it's, I think it's very, very early in the journey uh, of electric vehicles in the country. But you know, I do recall that this is not the first sort of wave of electric vehicles to have actually shown up, right? Uh, especially even in India, we have had this a little bit of EV uh, initiatives even early on. Uh, and I think uh, there was an electric car in the market, which didn't really do so well. Uh, I think that was the, you know, Mahindra's uh, Reva, right? So yeah. it was very early. I mean, I think it was launched uh, a long time ago. Uh, but what, what's your take on that? Like, what do you think happened there or did not work at the time for the EV industry back then. So, uh, yeah, Reva, I think uh, that, that was a great attempt at that time. And uh, probably it was a little bit early for its time. I think for the whole uh, electric vehicle uh, to take off, you know, the entire ecosystem needs to be in place. Right. And I think at that point in time, uh, Reva was the only player in the uh, market. And then uh, we didn't have this whole uh, infra thing going on also. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's why, you know, if you see how a car is used, there are different use cases, you know, either you can use it for your local travel or for a intercity travel or for, you know, office travel. So right. if the infra is not there and, uh, you know, the ecosystem is not there, so then the use cases where you can use an electric car becomes very small. Right. And I think so that in a way restricted the demand. And then I also feel uh, uh, because the demand was less, I, I think probably less investment was going on in the way the car was designed. It was, you know, more like a uh, two-seater. Mm-hmm. So that further now restricts the way you can use the car. Then I, I think there was also some poor feedback uh, from the customers. I think uh, there was something negative which was written in uh, UK uh, around uh, the particular mm-hmm. car. So I, I think that really impacted the export demand also. So I, I think uh, all these things kind of like, you know, came together and restricted the takeoff for uh, Reva at that time. Right. And, you know, you mentioned ecosystem as a very big, uh, let's say, you know, enabler and catalyst for you know any industry, I guess, to take off. Uh, and that's something which is finally sort of come into play, especially for EVs today, uh, which means even let's say a company like Capgemini, uh, you also, you know, are a participant in the industry and you're also a participant in, let's say, this entire ecosystem. So wh- how are you all enabling or f- and furthering the you know onboarding of EVs. Uh, could you share some examples of how you work with yeah. other companies? Yeah, so uh, Capgemini overall uh, is also uh, you know supporting and driving this entire agenda. And uh, there is a EV hundred global initiative, and uh, Capgemini is part of that particular initiative. And it's uh, you know uh, it brings together a lot of companies to make the shift towards electric vehicles. Uh, similarly, uh, within our campuses also, uh, we have uh, we are making a lot of investments on the electric charging points so that it's easier for our employees and colleagues to uh, you know use an electric car. And as a company, you know we are devoted to switching to 100% uh, renewable uh, energy for our needs by 2025. So uh, quite a few things we are doing 
to support that uh, agenda so you know you know when you're working with obviously various clients in the industry uh, different players like you said uh, in the in the ecosystem overall uh, what do you see as the let's say you know the major adoption challenges for electric cars overall uh, you know yeah. uh, both from maybe the industry side if you could give share something as well as consumer side yeah so uh, like i said definitely the ecosystem needs to be there uh, uh, for a consumer to become comfortable with the electric car and uh, slowly uh, you know in india also government is putting in all the policies you know there is a lot of push uh, there are certain targets being declared for 2030 so uh, which in a way is helping uh, uh, in the build up of this particular ecosystem now uh, once uh, you know as the ecosystem starts coming into shape then you have the actual product which is the electric car then the question becomes you know of affordability and in india we know where it's a very uh, uh, value conscious market and right. so uh, right now we have electric vehicles but still they are on the expensive side the mass market for us is still you know under 10 lakhs so uh, mm-hmm. i think the price point needs to come down uh, for these cars so that uh, adoption can uh, happen on a much uh, larger basis um and uh, uh, you know uh, again for electric cars the major cost component is your batteries so right. I, i think over the last 8 10 years the price of batteries has come down quite a lot and i, I think it will continue to happen but uh, the price is also impacted by the scale uh, that is there in the industry so in india right now the scale is less so we are not able to benefit from those uh, pricing advantages but now uh, unfortunately you know like what we were talking about earlier this whole uh, uh, russia ukraine thing is also impacting off late you know the inflation has taken up commodity oh, yes. prices are going up so uh, again you know <laughs> it's putting a huge pressure on uh, battery price because the raw material you know it's becoming very expensive now hmm. so even though the uh, you know tailwinds were there and things were all moving in the right direction now suddenly in the last one year or so Uh, we are again now facing certain challenges in terms of how do you bring the prices down uh, i'm confident you know in the next some years uh, this will continue its journey uh, downwards the pricing but mm-hmm. i think for the time being uh, we are just facing some uh, i'm hoping these are short to medium term challenges around inflation and uh, raw material costs so i think if the pricing of the product it comes down the ecosystem is there i think then we shouldn't face uh, much uh, uh, you know challenges in the adoption you know and like obviously you know you you have a very uh, ringside view of the manufacturing side of things and the you know the 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 you know oem side of things as well the kind of companies you work with as a last you know point like do you really do you think there's anything we all can do uh, as consumers who are uh, interest obviously there's a like you said there's a lot of consumer interest in sustainability and you know evs in general do you think uh, the indian market is ready and uh, looking forward to the this whole change uh, are people ready to move away from their uh, you know uh, fuel guzzling vehicles to uh, ev sort of driven lifestyle yeah i think definitely uh, in the metros i see uh, uh, you know a lot of mind share towards these uh new energy vehicles in fact the millennials also uh, you know the younger generation they are much more uh, uh, concerned about such issues uh, mm-hmm. i would say uh, relatively as compared to us uh, yeah. and uh, for them you know it's not just something beyond work uh, they are also trying to see how they can have such kind of issues uh, addressed by their company so i think awareness and concern for uh, climate and sustainability i think it'll just continue to grow and uh, we will see uh, you know the interest only grow right. i think uh, for us uh, uh, like personally you know uh, now i use a lot of uh, uh, you know cabs which run on cng uh, and electric i don't use my uh, 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 petrol car and i nice. think uh, so uh, the more uh, uh, all of us we use these uh, uh, alternative energy vehicles uh, the more demand will create and the earlier the oems will be forced to move Uh, onto that side right. and uh, yeah i think these are some of the things uh, we can do yeah awesome now i mean uh, you know ashish thank you so much for uh, the very enlightening chat i think we really got some interesting inputs there about this electric vehicle industry overall and uh, you know we as consumers ourselves like you said we all should play uh, our role to make sure that we can uh, you know increase the adoption over time uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us on uh, this episode of capgemini stackipedia and uh, we'll look forward to ev rollout in a much bigger way over the years to come yeah uh, 
Thanks a lot, Shila. Uh, thanks for having me here. And uh, yeah, definitely, I think uh, in the next few years, probably this topic would be hopefully done and dusted and there'll be something yes. else we'll be talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. So as you heard, climate change is drastically affecting the environment around us. These dire changes call for extraordinary measures to preserve the environment. And electric cars will play a major role in our battle against climate change. They'll help reduce the pressure on non-renewable sources of energy and lower the level of pollution caused due to CO2 emissions. What do you think some of the most significant changes brought by electric vehicles will be? Come and be a part of this conversation on Instagram at Capgemini India, and I'll see you on the next episode of Capgemini's Techipedia series. Hello, hello, hello. It's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Cyrus says his cock and bull, Cyrus Nivedita Tony and Antrix discuss the new IBM merge, which you should definitely go check out on our website, ibmpodcast.com. You can click the shop tab and that will take you to our partner, Grow91. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff there, which you should definitely check out. But besides the IBM merchandise, they also discuss thieves who perform puja before looting gold and cash worth rupees 34 lakhs in Kerala. Also, we would like to let you know about something we're very proud of. We've started this new podcast called The Vox Podcast in association with MMA India. It's about all things audio. Karthik Nagarajan, who also hosts the Filter Coffee podcast with us, talks to Anil Vishwanathan. He's the Senior Marketing Director at Mondelez India, and they discuss the innovative use of voice and audio. Speaking of Karthik Nagarajan on the Filter Coffee podcast, Virali Modi tells Karthik what it's like being disabled in India. The Simplified Gang dive into the manure pile to explore how much our country spends on fertilizer. On All Things Policy, the Takshashila folk analyze the policy implications of the 5th National Family Health Survey report. And on Say No to Drama, Chitna asks us to realign the stories we've been telling ourselves. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got some exciting news for you. IBM Podcast has launched merchandise and our first line is out now. Head to the IBM Podcast website and click on the shop tab and check out the first collection of t-shirts. Do follow us on social media as well. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on, whether it's Spotify, whether it's Apple, wherever you do that, that is really helpful for us. And do remember, you can also check a lot of our shows out on YouTube. If you go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, you get a list of all of our channels. We're also doing a small listener survey, so please do help us out with that. If you go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey, it'll help us understand a little bit more about our listeners. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life Insurance, Jupiter, a digital banking app, and Capgemini. Get the future you want. Thank you so much. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey, where you can fill out the survey.